Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Eirik, welcome to my studio and to my YouTube channel. You are watching an excerpt, a short section of episode 5 of my Patreon exclusive series, available to my patrons who support me with $5 or more. The full length video is over 40 minutes long and full of valuable information. To see the full episode, you have to go on my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Eirik Arneson. There is a link in the description below. You have to be a Patreon supporter of $5 or more in order to see the videos. Once you become a supporter, you will instantly have access to the videos. You will find the videos by clicking the post button here. The videos should appear if you have pledged $5 or more. And you can refine your search at the top of the page here. For now, sit back, relax, enjoy some royalty-free music and me sculpting the internal information of my Half-Life Size Sculpture. If you have watched all of these episodes, I'm sure you've heard me mention structure all the time. It's an element of sculpture that ensures the work is solid and not wobbly and weak. Every great sculpture has good structure, but good structure does not make a great sculpture. It's kind of the baseline, the lowest standard that we must reach in order for our work to have a chance at appearing visually pleasing or, or natural. Structure is applied to the bony points which we placed in episode 1. Structure is applied to our contours and structure should be applied to our internal information. Now here comes a very simple rule you can use while blocking in your internal information, one that will help you make a figure with structure. And the rule is simple. The rule is symmetry in internal information on either side of the center line. I'm of course speaking of the core of our figure here, the torso, as the legs and, and the arms doesn't really have a center line. This rule is so simple and so easy to follow. When you find internal information on one side, immediately look to the other side of the center line, and more likely than not, in most cases anyway, you'll find a very similar form. This happens of course because our anatomy is symmetrical on either side of the body. For example, the chest muscle on the left is attached at the bottom to the same rib as the right chest muscle, on the opposite side of the center line, of course. So in other words, the bottom edge of the pectoral muscle, which is the fancy name for the chest muscle, should be at the same height on either side of the center line. Now, if the center line of the ribcage tilts, the bottom edges of the pectorals will tilt with it. The bottom edges of the pectoral muscles will always be 90 degrees to the center line. And this is how you achieve good structure. And you'll find many, many, many examples of this all throughout the body. On the back, we have the two columns reaching up from the sacrum, which is right above the crease of the buttocks. They look like two big sausage-shaped muscles running up alongside the spine on either side. They will likely be very symmetrical. If one is a lot wider than the other, then it will impact the shape design around it as well, and you'll get a very wonky looking back. Now this rule, this trick, almost seems too good to be true, I know, but it works in more cases than not. It also works in terms of shape design. However, this is where observation comes in, because there are also several cases where the position of the body can distort the shapes somewhat. On the back here, for example, the two sausage-shaped muscles running up along the edge of the spine from the sacrum right above the crease of the buttocks, have a different shape design towards the top as the contrapposto, that's the pose our model is in, squeezes the flesh between the ribcage and the pelvis on the left side, creating a crease.
In between the ribcage and the pelvis, you have to be very careful as there is a lot of movement here that can disrupt this rule. Several other rules we used during our blocking, for example, symmetry and angle breaks, are also easily taken out in this section. So here you need to pay close attention and observe your model. The height of your oblique, for example, now the obliques are the muscles, more commonly known I guess as the love handles. The obliques sit on top of the pelvic crest and they fill the space between the pelvis and the ribcage on the flanks of our figure. The height of these muscles will often be different because one side of the body might be stretched while the other is compressed. This is the case here in our figure, in our contrapposto, as one side of the ribcage and pelvis are pressed closer together, while on the other side they are stretched apart. When the gap the obliques fill changes, then the height of the oblique will have to change too. The compression side oblique appears shorter but also wider, and the stretch side oblique will appear taller and also slightly narrower. This is not by a lot, by the way, and be very careful to not push this to the point where you have a discrepancy in symmetry on either side of the center line. You'll be surprised that even in this section there is symmetry on either side of your center line as far as width goes. Another area worth mentioning that is heavily impacted is the shoulder blades, from here on known as the scapulas. Scapula is the Latin name for shoulder blade. Because they move independently of each other, you need to pay close attention. The scapulas are bones, and if there is asymmetry in their position, you should work to make sure that the bones themselves are symmetrical, even if their placement and position is not. They should be of the same height and the same width. Because they move around on top of the ribcage, they can impact the width and size and shape of the forms around them. For example, the width of the trapezius muscle, that's the muscle that fills the space between the two scapulas. The trapezius muscle can be stretched wide by moving one arm forward, while moving an arm back will make this muscle bulge and become a little narrower. The scapulas can impact information around the armpit as well, as muscles are stretched when the arm is raised, for example. So pay close attention to areas where this can occur, and be careful not to exaggerate and push the asymmetries too far, by the way. Find as much structure as you can in these areas, in order to anchor the more organic and asymmetrical information around them. A good thing to always keep in mind is structure versus variety. You want both somehow, but too much structure and the sculpture becomes stiff and boring, and too much variety and the sculpture looks soft and unable to hold itself upright. Both are bad, and so we must straddle the line between them in order to find results we are after. Structure with variety or variety with structure. Now let's speak about shape design a little bit. Shape design is one of those things where your mindset towards it matter as you work because the way you see things and interpret things are colored by the glasses that you wear. The way we think about things impact the way we see things essentially. Shape design is also to a certain extent part of your style. I recently had an epiphany regarding shape design. I was watching a Steven Bauman drawing video here on YouTube and he spoke about dynamic versus static shape design. And somehow this unlocked something for me. I understood some critiques I got in school all of a sudden that I had been puzzling on for years. And I think it needs to be mentioned here that 
very little of what I know and talk about is something that I simply invented myself. Most of it was taught to me by others. We always stand on someone's shoulders and build upon what they thought us. And, and I still seek out educational content from artists I admire and find I learn a lot still. So always learning and never settling is part of being a good artist. If you enjoyed the video and want to learn sculpture from me, check out my Patreon page. I give feedback and critiques on people's work and we talk about whatever you need help with in your sculpting endeavors. And right now, there is exclusive sculpting video content on my Patreon. The first series we have embarked on is the Beginner's Guide to Figure Sculpture. I'm super excited to finally be creating exclusive content for Patreon and hope you will be too and will take a look. The link to my Patreon page is in the description below. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for a new video next Thursday. Hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever a new video comes out. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button and share with your friends and family. It really helps me out a lot. Thank you for watching, stay creative and I hope to see you in the next one.